Hello, my name is Darlene Booth Bell, and I am coming on behalf of the Wall College Wire. We are the Wall College of Business, which is at Coastal Carolina University. My name is Dr. Darlene Booth Bell, and I'm going to be giving you some tips to hopefully stay afloat during the COVID-19 financial crisis. First of all, there are a variety of resources that are available. We, the government is considering this to be an economic disaster, and so there are a variety of things that are available. Today's video is to help you understand some of the things that are available for you. First of all, there are a variety of loans that are available to small business owners. Some of these are even forgivable, or as we say, free money. First of all, there is the SBA Express Loan, and these SBA Express Loans are loans that are available through a bank. These are banks that offer SBA loans. There's also the Paycheck Protection Program or the PPP loan. Again, these are managed and funded by a bank. So if you take your payroll cost for the year, get an average for the month, that will help you to get to the number that you will be eligible for through the PPL loan through an SBA bank. There's also the SBA Economic Disaster Loan or the EIDL loan. This is up to $2 million and there's various interest rates, whether it's a small business or a nonprofit. There are also state municipality funded bridge loans. The SBA loan can be gotten directly through the SBA website. So we'll talk more about that. So for those who want to apply directly to the SBA, there's the SBA website, which I've provided in the presentation, but I've also provided it in the description below. Applying for these loans can be very simple if you understand some basic accounting and know some basic information about your business. However, if you don't, there are professionals who will do it for you but we want you to make sure to go to a correct website, not a copycat website that you just Google and come up with maybe a website that's designed to steal your personal information. We don't want you to have the added burden of identity theft on top of the issues that are created for small businesses from the COVID-19 problem. So use a trusted professional. If you can't do it yourself, it can be very doable. Um, I've done, several as an accountant and it does not need to be difficult. If you are going to uh, seek assistance from a professional, make sure it's someone that is known to you. Do not accept calls from cold callers, from uh, emails promising to get you government money. These can be scams and you want to protect yourself from these. It is okay for professionals to charge you to do this work, However, be aware of those who want to charge too little. Sometimes if it's too cheap, it may not be a legitimate site. So again, we want you to be protected throughout this so that you don't have that additional thing to worry about. So there are some other issues or other ideas that you can um, pursue to keep you afloat during what may be a hardship for your business. First of all, to keep cash or to increase your liquidity, the government has extended the tax filing deadline to April 15th. If you decide that you want to take this extension, it could help you to keep some of the cash within the business to help you pay for things that may be coming due. Also the CARES Act, which you may have heard a lot about. The CARES Act specifically has a lot to do with individuals, and you may have heard about $1,200 for individual taxpayers who meet the actual uh, requirements of it. But there are also things in that that may help a small business owner. For example, if you have an IRA or a retirement account, you can take out up to $100,000, even if you're not 59 and a half and not have to pay the 10% penalty. Now, this income, it will still be counted as income on your tax return. So you want to be careful about that as well, but you will not have to pay the 10% penalty. For specific information on that, you should seek a tax accountant to find out if this is viable for you, because again, this is still income and it probably should be a last result. Also, 
for those who um, seek some of these funds from the SBA and other programs, know that if it is used for certain things, like to maintain your payroll, it can be forgiven. The government is very keen to keep employees on payrolls so that you can maintain the expertise in your business that you need to be successful on those people that you trust to do the work who are your employees. But also, it also helps people to stay off the unemployment rolls. So much of the funds you may find that are lended to you, if they're used for things like maintaining your payroll, you actually can have those funds forgiven. Again, free money. So the best person to ask about these funds would be the person that is helping you to complete your application or maybe even your bank. If you are, um, if you are familiar with a bank that does SBA type of loans. Closing thoughts. I want you to con communicate to your creditors if you're having problems. Talk to your utility companies, your mortgage companies. Let them know in advance and not after you're two or three months behind. There are certain payroll companies that are helping, such as Paychex, that will help you to navigate how to get some of this money that is designed to help you maintain your payroll. You want to collect payments from your clients or customers that owe you sooner rather than later. The longer this may go on, the longer people may have economic fallout and therefore the less likely you are to get your money. Sometimes your contracts may or may not provide cancellations of contracts due to disasters. That's for your attorney. But if you have monies owed to you, you want to collect those sooner rather than later. You want to see if there's other things your bank can do for you, like overdraft protection, like lines of credit. Again, liquidity that can keep you afloat until things return to normal. There is a Facebook grant that you might want to look into. Again, I'll provide the link in the description. And as always, you want to make sure that you just practice safe things in your business. You want people to be safe. Pay attention to the directions that come to you from your governor's office, from local officials, to do things in a safe way so that not only your business survives, but you and your employees are healthy and do not become sick. This video has been provided to you by the Wall College Wire. These are city series of videos that are presented by the faculty of the Wall College of Business at Coastal Carolina University.